Hello and welcome to our podcast, Conversation with Elders. My name is Makati Mugwena, a pilgrim in heels, and the podcast is supported by Euphoria Partners. In the podcast, I'll be having conversations with various elders in our communities. And by elders, I mean those people who draw their information from wisdom traditions, from indigenous traditions, perhaps. And it's essentially about how can we, humanity, do better at being humans and be guided by a purpose much higher than ourselves and a purpose that will surely benefit all of humanity and all beings that inhabit this planet that we call Mother Earth. The podcast is essentially um, inspired by the immense challenge and invitation that COVID-19 presents us. And I'm very happy this afternoon to welcome a very dear friend of mine, Claire Crichton, to have a conversation with. And she's going to be bringing the topic of soul loss. Claire, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Makati. I'm so excited to be here today and to, and to speak about soul loss. Um, I work as a shamanic practitioner in, in Cape Town, South Africa, and it's a very um, dear subject to my heart. So I'm really looking forward to sharing some of that um, information today. Me too. I'm also very much looking forward to hearing. Claire, can I ask you to, to take us through a very brief invocation or a centering mindfulness activity, just to get us grounded into ourselves and into the conversation that we're going to have? Sure. Thank you. So... Um... Everybody who's listening and watching this right now, I just invite you to close down your eyes for a moment or two. And bringing your awareness to your breathing as you take a deep breath in. And releasing. <sighs> breathing in. Releasing. And one more deep in breath. Releasing. And allowing yourself now to truly let go of the outside world. As you bring your awareness within. And feeling the cooler air as it moves into your body and the warmer air as it leaves. And giving yourself permission right now to just be here, be present, be now. And as you breathe in and out, imagine, sense, or feel that you are able to breathe in and out of your heart in the center of your chest. Connecting with this deep love, this deep compassion your true essence. And it's the space that we can always come back to, the space that never leaves us. returning to truly who we are. Mm. And then gently taking a few deep breaths again. And 
and stretch and move your body, just connecting with your physical being. Hmm. And when you feel ready, just opening your eyes. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you for that. So Claire, when we when we had our conversation, um, we we had spoken about just the big loss that COVID nineteen is bringing us. Um, it isn't, of course, the only thing that brings us loss. We've we've experienced loss prior to this pandemic. Um, but your your immediate impulse was, oh, I want to talk about soul loss. Can you tell us what that is, please? Yeah. <clears throat> so um, soul loss is part of our, imagine that we, each of us have a, a soul. And throughout our life, for whatever reason, we may go through um, a period of trauma or um, a shock, even a car accident, any type of wounding or trauma or perceived wounding or trauma that may happen to us in our life may cause a fragment of the soul to separate from itself. And it does this in order to preserve its original essence, its original purity. And so what can happen over time individually, but also as a collective, is we can lose the essence of truly who we are. And that is called soul loss. Mm. And so the result of this individually could, could, could be things like um, always feeling like we're wanting to, um, we're looking for something. We're looking for something. We're not, we don't feel quite whole. We need to go shopping or we need to have that addiction or anchor into that or do something else that's going to make me feel better than where I am right now. Mm. And so soul loss is individual, as I said earlier, but it can also be a collective soul loss that we go through. Mm. So, so just to understand, um, we, 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 we work from the understanding that all of us are born with a soul, come into this world, are incarnated with a soul. And, and that it is a pure essence of who we are, but that various experiences can whittle away, can cut off aspects of our attachment, our identifying with, with our soul. And so eventually we find ways to, um, to make up for it by, by trying to, to, to fill that space with all sorts of um, consumptions. Yeah, totally. And then what happens is we lose a sense of actually who, oh, who am I? We, we sometimes wake up and we go, who am I? What is this life that I have? Is this actually really making me happy? How did that happen? But quite often that will come through what we call an awakening. Mm -hmm. An awakening will often come after some form of a death or loss. So we see the cycle of death and rebirth constantly evolving and flowing through life, even on a simple day. Each morning is a new day and each night is the end of that day. Each breath is the beginning um, and the end. So as we awaken, we can begin to look around us and look at now that I'm awakening, who am I and how do I tap into that? Hmm. So I, yeah, I, I, I like that very much. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like <clears throat> because the soul is the essence of who I am and it holds the blueprint really of, of who I really am, that when I go through experiences that interrupt my identifying with my soul, that it keeps sending me messages, perhaps. And it's trying to get my attention to say, come back home, 
come and live your life from this true essence of who I am, rather than from identifying with external things that I imbue a lot of meaning into. Um, and so the soul keeps sending all these messages and maybe I'm not attentive because I'm intoxicated by the pleasures of the world or by the difficulties of the world. Um, and so all these things will keep happening. The soul will keep sending messages until um, one day maybe I get it or through a crisis, maybe I get it that, ah, maybe I should now start reevaluating um, who I am. Yeah, and that's, it's very interesting that you mentioned that because that's actually what happened with me. Mm. So I had, like you said, you know, that it comes knocking, it comes knocking, it comes knocking. And I had knocks and knocks and knocks over many years of different illnesses. Um, it was when I was working in the corporate world and when I was working with businesses that didn't align to my values because I was placing one of my highest values um, as financial wealth. And there's nothing wrong with having a value as that, but that isn't actually when I looked um, later on in life, that isn't actually one of my, my um, core values personally. So because I was placing one of my core values as that, I was not coherent and I was not, um, my life was not congruent with my, my, my soul's essence. And so I was getting ill and um, I woke up one morning and I couldn't move my body. And I found out after going to the doctor a few days later when I could eventually get out of bed, move my body, go to the doctor, that I had a thing called viral arthritis, which is a virus that gets into all the joints of the body. And I said to the doctor, oh, my gosh, but what, what causes this? How did I pick this up? And she said, stress. And I said, oh, I'm not stressed. My life is great. I have the money I want. I travel wherever I want to. I have the lifestyle I want, et cetera. And then I reflected and I realized that actually I wasn't actually that happy. Mm. And I didn't actually have the lifestyle that I wanted. And I had to ask them some really serious questions of myself of what were my values? What did I want from life and how was I going to do this? So my point is, is that that was a, that was my crisis. That was my, one of my awakenings, because I believe we'll go through various layers of awakenings, but I had been sick on and off for quite a long time before that, not realizing and just thinking, oh, it's part of life. It's a part of what our experience is, but actually it's not if we are truly in alignment with who we are and doing what we're meant to be doing. It, it, it sounds to me that it would take a great deal of courage um, to press pause. I mean, let's just paint a scenario. Here you have somebody who is in a great job, who does have um, the perfect life deemed by society or deemed even by themselves as perfect. And, um, and, and nothing, is, nothing is wrong. How, how, would, um, how would that person know whether they have the coherence that you spoke about, you know, the alignment with their values that you spoke about? Um, how would one know and how would one, one be able to, how would one know that they are in coherence or are not in coherence? That's such a beautiful question and there's quite a simple answer to that. And the simple answer is, if we think that there is something outside of ourselves that is going to help us feel better and help us get somewhere, then we are out of alignment. Because yes, there may be a vision that we would love to get to. However, if we're placing our, our awareness on that all the time, on these things outside of ourselves all the time, to get to a better state of being, a better state of being, then we are looking for something that's actually inside of us because we have the entire cosmology, we have the entire um, essence of what it is we're looking for inside. Hmm. Hmm. 
And of mm. course that, that, you know, we can drill down and go into a deeper, this is not a very, very long discussion, but we could drill down and look at addictions. We could look at codependent relationships. We could look at careers that we choose that are out of alignment. There are many different signs. So mm. it's about asking what brings me joy? Mm. What naturally brings me joy? And it might not be, it quite often is not this massive thing. It's quite often something very simple because the soul is simple. And when we know what brings us joy and, and keys to know what brings you joy would be things like, what do I do in my spare time that um, where I lose all sense of time, I become so immersed in that activity. It could be photography, it could be gardening, it could be singing, it could be writing, whatever. Um, what are my hobbies? What do I do where nobody actually, where it's not a schlep, it's not like a, ugh, a mission to do it. What do I do naturally that I love to do? Of course, what love, brings me joy. Yeah. Uh, you know, just when you're talking about the things that, the, the hobbies that we get lost in, you, you, you made me think of flow of the work of Mihaili Shikshent. Mihaili, I'm saying his name very incorrectly, please. <laughs> but he, he speaks exactly about how when we are in alignment, that the activities that we engage in, when they're in flow, when they're in alignment, we, 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 we don't even think about it. Time passes um, without any effort on our part. Or maybe there is, there is some effort, but we are completely switched off. We are not even aware of that, that time passing. That, that's, what you, that's the kind of thing that you're talking about in order to assist us to think about, am I in flow? Am I in alignment with whatever it is that I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's that also another thing is, it's the thing that you do naturally. Because, because joy and the soul is never something where you feel it needs to be forced, it needs to be controlled, or I'm pushing against something to make it happen. So the moment that happens in our life, we know we've gone out of alignment with whatever, if we're working, whatever project we're working on in life, whatever program, whatever work we're doing, the moment we're forcing and it feels a struggle, we need to take a step back, have a look at what went out of alignment and either move back into alignment or we what needs to change in order to go more with the flow. Yeah. I want to pick up on something that you mentioned earlier, which is um, looking at hobbies and one, how one passes, how one uses their pastime. Um, because I, you know, and a thought came to mind that if I'm in a particular job and it is, it is imperative for me, to be doing that because because I, I have dependencies, I have um, responsibilities, and um, and it's impossible for me, or I see it as it being impossible for me to leave that job. But in some ways, it's actually not feeding me. How how would um, how would you speak about about that to me? What words? Yeah, two things. And I love that question as well, because it's, it's people, we can often, as humans, I think we think things need to be grand, you know, my purpose, my purpose has to be this grand thing, I need to save the world, I need to get on the stage, I need to be this grand being. But we are a grand being when we, just by being, just by being. <laughs> so, um, the two things I want to say around that is, so yeah, because a lot of people will be in, 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 in jobs that they need to be in. Um, so what I did when I was working for an organization, um, and I knew that my, my, I knew what I wanted to do and I knew what my purpose was, but it wasn't really being fulfilled within the job that I was doing. And so I actually bought my purpose to work. I brought my purpose into my work and I spoke to my HR director one day and I said, could I please run meditations with the staff on Friday free of charge because this is what I really feel I want to be doing. I was a fundraiser for a homeless charity in the UK and, um, 
And he said, of course, try it out. So I reeled my purpose into my job. So there's ways that you can bring it into your um, everyday job. Mm. But also your purpose can be, um, I, I, love, um, I love to tell stories. And there was this, um, here's another story about this guy that I used to see. Um, I used to live in an area called Glen Cairn in, in um, Cape Town. And there's this big hill in Glen Cairn. And there's this guy I used to see almost every day walking up the hill with his backpack on his back. He's a homeless guy. Um, and he'd always wave at everybody. And I thought, what is this guy waving at everybody for? And, you know, I'd wave at him. And then one day I realized, ha, huh, I think his purpose is to bring connection to people. So he gets up every day. And by doing this simple act of waving at somebody, he is totally in alignment with his, the essence of what he really wants to bring to the world. And I always think that that's just a, such a simple and lovely example to give to all of us that we can bring purpose into everything that we do. Hmm. It doesn't have to be only in our career or in our work. Right. And in that way, then we nourish our soul. Gosh, and 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 you earlier spoke about the collective loss, um, collective soul loss, and it made me think of um, particularly with this pandemic, that there's there's so many lives that are being lost. There's so many people who are touched by the loss of their loved ones' li um, lives, and so so that, that the collective trauma that we're experiencing now. Is, is, is global. And I, I wondered if you had a few words to say to that, mm -hmm. just your thinking. Mm. So just a collective soul loss would be an example of that would be something like uh, in the Second World War, um, because of the trauma that was experienced at such a wide level in the Second World War by everybody who was living at the time, that set up, so we talked about traumas earlier on and how we can lose. So the trauma was, I need to fight to survive. I, I, need, I, need, to, um, I need to be physically safe. I need to earn money, always, as much as I can, because um, uh, my life might be lost and taken away from me and my business, etc. And that sets up a pattern of behavior where I always need to earn money. I, um, I need to be safe. I need to be, um, um, uh, I need to look after everything I have and hold it tightly. So, and we can see how that has affected future generations, especially the ba baby boomers um, who then um, experience that, even though they don't necessarily know why they experience that, they grow up believing that that's what life has got to be. So that's an example of soul loss and how it can result in patterns of behavior. With this pandemic and what's going on now, um, and all the loss that we are experiencing around us, it may, you know, cause PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, when we come out of it, because when we're in a situation where we have to keep going, we have to keep doing just to, in order to survive and cope, you know, many people are losing their jobs and losing their income and unfortunately people are losing their lives etc and so we need to keep going keep going keep going and then when it's over we rise up out of it and then we're like oh i've like disconnected from myself totally because i was running 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 to survive through that period of time so and that's normal because that we, we kind of have to run on adrenaline, don't we, to, in order to keep going. And so a key um, um, technique, if you want to call it that, or an um, exercise that we can do as often as possible is just on a daily basis or even more than once a day, a few times a day, a little bit like the meditation, the short and simple meditation that we did, it takes one minute you just breathe, you bring your awareness back to your heart and you just say to yourself, I am safe. I'm connected to my heart. I am my heart. Because this helps to center us and it helps to connect us to our essence. 
so that when we eventually do all come out of this, we are not going to be fully separated from ourselves and have to deal with soul retrievals and the symptoms of soul loss. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you does for that. that. Makes sense? Yeah, no, no, it absolutely does. It absolutely does. Um, I, I, and I love how you pointed out the fact that a lot of us are in, in response, response, or react, react, react mode. And just by taking that time to, to, to settle deep in the heart, that that brings us back to stillness and that brings us back to ourselves. And that is the connection that we need. That is the connection that is needed right now. And perhaps when we come from that spot, when we, when we are able to tap into that essence of myself, then when I go out to connect with others around me, it's coming from a place of nourishment rather than from a place of need, need, need. Not that there's anything wrong with needing, but when we come from a place of, of self, even when I express my needs, um, I'm more able to express them in a way that they can be met, either by others or even by myself. So thank you. For, thank you. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, and, um, and I'm actually, as you're talking, I'm reminded of something you and I were talking about earlier, about how, um, and I often bring this back to myself, um, I remind myself this, that when we are in the womb, the first thing that begins to grow is our heart. And then our arms and our legs and everything grow from that. So if we remember that, huh, I am actually my heart and everything, my body and my life around me is an extension of my heart, as is everybody else's. Wow, isn't that a beautiful thing to remember on a daily basis? Yeah. Yeah. That's who we are. Yeah. Rather than I am my belongings, rather than my neighbor is their belongings or their property or they are all sorts of things. And so what we are coming to is even redefining or remembering who we are um, as opposed to who we are told we are and what we are told we should be desiring by our, you know, our cultures, our tribes, our whoever, societies, communities. But coming back to actually who I am is, it's inside of me. It's not something that can be defined outside of me. Claire, I would love for us to continue talking, but we, um, we have to bring it to a close. And I am so grateful to have had you come in. I don't know if you have a word or two in closing that you would like to leave us with. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. I love um, to talk about the subject. I think what I would love to say to people is um, we're in a time of release and renewal. That's my feeling. We're in a time of um, recalibrating and really remembering, as you just said, remembering who we are and, and how we want to live our life according to that. So it's actually, it's a beautiful opportunity to speak this at this time. So thank you for the invitation. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. And have a beautiful day. And thank you, everyone, for listening. And please join me next time when I have a conversation with Nina Callahan. Have a beautiful day.